Hi folks, I'm Ashley, one of the founders of Skira, and today I'm going to show you some of the highlights of the new features in Construct 3 release 407. Let's dive in. Now, to start with, I've got a sample project here using a hierarchy. You may have uh, seen this demo before, and uh, as you may know, hierarchies allow you to join objects together like this to create connected objects, um, which is a great way to create interesting animations and such. Now, we've got a great new feature which allows you to inspect the way instances in the layout work, and this is really good for hierarchies as well. So if I go to View, Bars, and show the Instances bar, this now allows showing this hierarchy, but in a tree form, which can be a more convenient way to look at all the information you've got here. So instead of seeing it visually with all the arrows pointing everywhere, you can see it in a more organized tree structure. You can also rearrange the hierarchy by dragging and dropping things around. So that's adjusted the way the hierarchy works there. And you can see that at the top is the body segment, which is the root of the hierarchy, and everything else beneath it are children. There's a few other ways you can uh, view this information. So you can see there's show more information for meshes, uh, plugins, timelines, templates, and uh, a few options there to adapt the view to the kind of information you're interested in. So rather than try and flood you with too much information, you can choose what you're interested in and view it in the new instances bar. So that's a great new feature. Have a look at that. We hope you find it useful. Um, another feature while I'm here, which is uh, also useful, is you can now set tags for individual instances. So in the properties bar, there's a new tags property for all objects. And for example, you can type in arm to tag this instance as, a, as arm, uh, and this one again, so you can apply the same tag to these two objects. Here I could uh, choose that one as leg. And uh, why not use a string instance variable? The, the Making tags built in uh, means you can um, uh, use them in the event sheets uh, with a built-in um, condition here, um, which um, under miscellaneous there's has tags and uh, it allows autocomplete. So you can uh, see here, it's got the instance tags that are used in the project, um, which is a nice feature. And it also means the editor is able to show these tags uh, to help identify instances in various places, such as the instances bar and the Z order bar and so on. So it's a more useful way to identify unique instances than the UID, which is just a number. So uh, for example, here you can see this UID is 13, uh, and the tag leg might be a more useful description for that instance. Um, so, fairly straightforward, but a useful feature uh, nonetheless. Um, while I'm talking about instances and the event sheet, um, there's also a new set of uh, actions and features for instances. Um, if you're familiar with signals in the system object, you can now find these uh, available on a per instance basis as well. So you can use signal for individual instances, wait for signal, um, which will wait for all the picked instances to have their signal, uh, and there's also the um, on signal trigger as well, if uh, th there it is, on signal. Um, so this is uh, another useful way to um, come up with custom project logic. Uh, works slightly differently to custom actions, it's just another option for you uh, to try out. Okay, moving on, uh, we've got some new improvements for flowcharts as well. So to demonstrate these, I will just uh, bring up a, a flowcharts example. Um, so here's a simple example using flowcharts um, for a questionnaire. Um, and as you may remember, flowcharts allow you to creating structured data, such as a, um, a series of questions to ask, and uh, different questions will be asked depending on your previous answers. Um, some of the new um, improvements we've got here include uh, the ability to add a comment node. So this is just a bit like a sticky note uh, where you can put in a, a comment and uh, maybe explain more about what's happening at different parts of your flowchart. Uh, and another option is uh, these nodes now have a color property. So you can, for example, highlight the entire node with a color like green and uh, also use that to help organize your flowcharts. There's a few other usability improvements uh, thrown in along the way as well. Okay, moving on once again, um, we have another um, useful uh, improvement for reducing your download size. So uh, we've written a blog about this recently, which you may have seen, but we now support um, sprite sheeting 
uh, lossy images. So lossy formats like JPEG, WebP, and AVIF, or AVIF as I say, um, are um, not typically been used in the past for sprite sheets. Uh, JPEG uh, lacks support for transparency uh, and it's also not very good quality. But these days, as particularly with AVIF, um, you've got support for alpha and very good quality even with a lossy format. So just to very quickly demonstrate what you can do with this is um, uh, in the animations editor here, uh, you've got the set export image format option. And uh, this is uh, this has always been here, but um, you can choose to use, say, a lossy format and uh, set it to quality 75, for example. And here you can choose to set this to the um, entire project. So all the images in the entire project are now going to use a lossy format with quality 75. Uh, so that's now applied. And um, the new change is now when you look at sprite sheets, it will have preserved to your sprite sheets um, so it didn't do this before because it was designed for background images, but now, just as with lossless formats, you've now got all the uh, sprite sheets as you would have had before, but using a lossy image compression format. Um, and you can see this is the uh, View Sprite Sheets uh, dialog, which has had a bit of a refresh as well. Um, in case uh, you want to see that, uh, you can right click on the project name in the project bar, and that's the View Sprite Sheets option under the Tools menu. So now if you export the project, uh, you can now choose to use the AVIF format, AVIF, uh, format there, or another format like WebP. I wouldn't recommend JPEG because it doesn't support transparency, uh, but AVIF is it's an incredible format. You should read the blog post, read more about how it works in practice, uh, and it's incredible. Here's one I exported earlier, as exporting can take a while, uh, and you can see here, for example, this is the uh, player sprite sheet using AVIF format. It's only 78, 79 kilobytes, um, and it's got full support for transparency, as you can see, and it's very difficult to see any artifacts at all. It's a, it's a really impressive uh, quality that it's able to preserve, uh, even uh, with a lossy format. So there's no JPEG artifacts like you might have seen before. It's pretty impressive. Um, very difficult to see um, any artifacts there. And that allows you to really push the quality down whilst giving a still good image quality, which really reduces the download size of your project. So download size is still important these days. If you want to publish to an arcade or a platform which has a file size limit, you can use this to really squeeze your project download size really a lot smaller than it you could have achieved previously. While I'm looking at the export dialog, I'll mention one other thing is when you export your project, you also have the option to minify the JavaScript code, which makes it much smaller and harder to reverse engineer. Previously, this was always done with Clojure Compiler, but unfortunately, it's not such a well-maintained uh, tool anymore. Uh, it doesn't support the latest JavaScript features. So we've introduced Uglify.js as a new option. It should more or less work exactly as it did before um, with its simple or advanced mode, uh, but it's just using a different tool to achieve the same result. Uh, we recommend that you use Uglify.js. Uh, the only reason Clojure Compile is there is in case there's some kind of bug with Uglify.js we haven't found out yet. So the option is still there to uh, use the old one if you want to but we will remove support for Clojure Compiler in future, so we advise that you get going with Uglify.js. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. That's a few of the highlights for uh, this release. Uh, as ever, see the release notes for the full details. Um, I'll link to the blog post and other information in the video comments. Uh, thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy using Construct.